Good day, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss the topic, concept development. The objectives first is to determine the scope of a project, which will in turn determine the complexity of the planning process, and then explain the process of concept development for hotels, chains, restaurants, and institutions. And then what are the guides for the person who is contemplating a design or equipment, replacement project, decision-making process regarding menu, the market, the management, the money, and methods of execution. And then we are going to introduce the elements of feasibility study and outlines the different kinds of feasibility research that are necessary before designing a food service facility. Here are some questions that may come into your mind. Are you a new restaurant owner or operator and don't know where to start? Or maybe you've owned a restaurant for a while and are looking for a fresh perspective on your operation. In developing a concept, you need to consider the scope of your project. So here are the different scopes of a project. Let's define first what is a scope. When we say scope, this refers to the size and complexity of a food service facility design project. And the scope of the project influences the design approach taken by the manager. We have the level one scope. So for the level one scope, it involves no more than the selection of a major piece of equipment or the replace of a small area of a food service facility or for the level two, it involves the renovation of a significant of an existing food service facility. Or if your project is in level three, so this involves the complete renovation of an existing food service facility or the design and construction of a new food service facility. Or if your concept is on level four, it involves the development of a chain our franchise prototype. Okay, so these are the different scopes of a project. So we have the level one to four. So if, for example, you are the owner, of course you need to consider all of the levels. You know, on what level or level of the scope you are going to um, focus. Okay as well as if you are a food service design consultant. Okay. So all of the selection of this level of scope will vary depending upon the uh, personnel or the position that you are going to portray into a concept development. Okay. For an architect, you just consider to um, perform or to have a concept development might be or either of the level two to four or if you are an engineer of course you need to consider level levels one to four interior designer so from level two to four general or you can consider levels two to four as well as well as for the subcontractor and then for if you are an equipment dealer of course you can uh, cater all of the levels no from level one to four. And then if you're a factor representative, you, know, you can consider level one. If you are a banker, lawyer, accountant, and realtor, you can have a business with a scope of a project for the concept development levels three to four. Okay, so here are the timelines you know, for projects of different levels of scope. For planning, for level one, it can be one week. For level two, four weeks. Level three, six weeks. And level four, two months. Equipment selection for level one, it can be one week. For level two, two weeks. For level three, one month. And for level four, two months. Now, if you are an, uh, going to design and do engineering um, activities, for level one, it can be one week. For level two, it can be four weeks. Level three, it can be two months. And for level four, it can be four months. 
So if you are going to prepare a B document, no, it can be for level one, two days, for level two, four weeks, for level three, and for level four, two months as well. For the equipment delivery for level one, it can be four to six weeks. For level two, it can be two to three months. Okay, and then for level three and four, it can be four to six months. And then for the installation, it can be three to five days for the level one. Uh, for level two, it can be two to six. For level three, it can be one to three months. And for level four, it can be one to three months as well. Again, this is the timeline. No? These are the timelines for projects of different levels of scope. When we say concept development uh, for food service operation, it is the overall plan for how it will meet the needs and expectations of its intended market. So in food service operation concept, this is expressed in so many ways. Now you need to consider including the menu, the decoration, the form of service, the pricing, and the location. And then uh, also, this means developing a plan for the success of the operation. Of course, when you're going to have a concept, no, you are um, thinking of its success. Okay? You will claim that it will be successful and the establishment that you are going to put up will be a big hit. Okay? So in consideration for the market, of course, okay? and then uh, how are you going to have a successful concept? No? You need also to consider the design. No? So it can be designed for a let alone building or any facility. Okay? Development for restaurant also involves planning details for many particular issues or practical issues. Instead of just choosing a style of cuisine, it's not as simple as that. Okay? When you are going to plan a concept for restaurant, you just need or the type of cuisine or the style of cuisine is not only the important consideration, but the planning details. Okay? Choosing whether a restaurant focuses on a scale, casual, or fast food is very important. But other issues also no, that includes planning restaurant design, studying the competitors or the competitive challenges, researching market demographics, and developing a financing strategy. So these are uh, the critical considerations or issues that you need to uh, consider in having or developing a also, a strong concept exploits culinary trends, you know, develops a brand being strategy, identifies suppliers, and analyzes whether to franchise the concept or not. Because when you are going to uh, decide if your business is, um, or if you plan to franchise a business, uh, the concept will also, the concept of the business will also be franchised, meaning uh, the business that you are going to acquire has its own concept already. Okay, up to you if you want to have a franchise business wherein the concept are already developed, or if you want to have a fresh concept, or if you want to have or to do that, you are the one to um, do or to stipulate all the standards operating procedures. So that's very different. So that's the difference between a franchise concept and an original concept, okay? So here are the following restaurant considerations. I'm going to uh, conceptualize or to develop a concept for your business. Okay, you need, of course, to consider the budget, you know, the design, the restaurant design budget, the brand personality, the brand promises, the brand positioning, no, as well as the silverware and the uniform. Okay, and then also you need to consider the ventilation, the bathrooms and brand immersion, restaurant menu design, storage needs, and lighting design. So as you can see, there are lots of things to consider when you are going to create a restaurant business. It's just like you have a beautiful concept, you have a beautiful theme, 
but as well as you need to scrutinize factors or all the considerations in designing your restaurant. So as I mentioned, okay, so we have here 11 restaurant design considerations. Okay, so for the concept development, you can have a single unit restaurant design or concept, you can have chain restaurants, you can have multi team restaurants, you can have hotel, food and beverage, and you can also have institutional or non commercial commercial food service concept. Okay, so for the multi-team restaurant uh, concept, a particular form of multi-unit restaurant for which concept development is critical to success is the restaurant organization that opens and operates restaurants. Those concepts, food concepts are not identical but different. Okay, a multi-unit restaurant or the MUR firm can be as an organization competing in the food service industry with more than one unit of a like concept or theme. So single firms that owns and operates a number of restaurants or restaurants with different concepts, menus, and target markets. So theme rest a restaurant designed around a particular sport, era style or of music or entertainment industry and personality. Okay. So when you are going to decide to have a multi team restaurant, of course, from the word itself, multi, it means there are lots of concepts. No? Each of your restaurant has different concepts, menus, and target market. So when we say theme, you know, this has a specific or particular theme. You know? For example, sports. You know? And as uh, other examples, like. Okay, multi team restaurants uh, have different or three segments. Okay, it can be quick service, it can be casual and business industry or business in the industry. Okay, recent additions to this typology can be fast casual segments or upscale casual segments. Okay, in developing your, for your multi team restaurant, the three should be to support the main concept. So here are the following considerations. First is the speed. Now it should be a design uh, in which it supported the main concept. No? How much room do you need for dining area and kitchen? How will the look, feel, and smell of the space convey your concept from the moment a customer first walks in? Okay, think beyond the space for your marketing materials and style. And then consider how to translate your unique brand into your social media and advertising channel. So you have different uh, things you know, to consider. You now, first here the space, and then how many, you know, how many rooms for your dining area and kitchen, and then of course the ambience. Okay, and how are you going to market or to um, advertise what? going to use and then of course a uh, what social media platform or what platform of advertisement are you going to use so consider this when you find a unique approach that engages your audience you have a great chance to launch a restaurant that outlasts the trend and the competition the sum of their parts so if you uh, have uh, these considerations in your mind and you have a unique way on how to execute this consideration. So you have your advice from your competitors. Okay, that's for the multi-team restaurant. Okay, so example is Hard Rock Cafe. So the inspiration for Hard Rock Cafe, so the music experience and the surrounding suite. Okay, so on October 2011, the Hard Rock Cafe in Bangkok, architect Keith and Pinda Nanda designed the restaurant with the aim to reconnect hard rock back to its core values, which is music combined with food, food and drink to create a dynamic experience. So as you can see here in the example, it is very important to uh, consider your core values when you are creating your concept. What or what are the goals you wanted to pursue in creating your business. Okay, and then you need to stick with that. Okay. 
For the institutional food service or for the non-commercial food service, so when we say institutional food service, it is usually conceived as a service to an organization and most often has a not-for-profit philosophy. So non-commercial food service can be defined as food service operations where food and beverage are not the primary focus of a business, but rather where food and beverage are present to support or supplement a host. Food services in institution include those in which planning, preparation, and usually the services of the food are carried on outside on outside the home or an in quantity than those characteristics for family needs. So here are the food facts. No? Institutional food service managers are less susceptible to the pressures of the latest hosting in the world or the, in the food world. What the institutional manager cares about is creating a menu that provides diners with balanced nutrition. So in institutional or non-commercial service establishment, so as uh, it says here in the explanation, so the primary um, the primary business for this is not the food, but as well as the this food business supplement, you know, the host or the business. For example, in university, in a university, there is there is always a cafeteria in a university. Uh, the primary focus of the business is of course education but the cafeteria supplements no the supplies of the food okay, for those uh students and even the faculty and other staff of that university so the primary focus again for the institutional food service um institution or food service establishment is not directly what it is it just supplements the uh, host or the primary business of that institution okay but of course so let's go back you need to have also planning no? and then uh even though it's not just uh looking or not always looking for the competitors no? from different competitors of, for example restaurants and casual dining and uh, uh, qsr no uh, it's not like that. The primary purpose is for them to create you know, that provides their diners the balance of creation because most of the diners are students you know, are, uh, and as well as the ac academicians. Okay? So they need to um, make sure that the food that they are going to serve is well balanced. Okay? And um, it has a nutrition or nutritional value. Okay? So that's their primary focus. Okay, for the food prep, for the institutional or uh, non-commercial food service, the solution is to shine a spotlight on the food preparation experience itself. The cafeterias have more of a market feel with uh, various stations, more chefs can prepare and customize dishes. And the stations are crafted from recycled or natural material and fit for environmental graphics that celebrate local, seasonal, and produce. Okay, then the feeling is by because uh, maybe it's because of their uh, customers or their target markets that mostly are students and most are mostly are young. You no, know, they need to to um, supplement what are what this market are needing. Okay, in terms of food. So if uh, the students. If the or the target uh, elementary students, they need to prepare a uh, different um, food, or the food should be nutritious always, no? And uh, they need to have uh, other stuff to prepare for other other gender of the institution, for example, uh, or, or the other uh, market, the profession of their customers within that institution. So. Uh, it's not just only the students, but also uh, they also have these uh, teachers, uh, principals, or the deans, no? So they need to prepare different uh, menu for this different market, no? For their different customers, okay? Next. 
So in institutional food service uh, facility, it can be uh, food stations as well. No, they can have this what they call boutiquing of food service, which means that instead of one large cafeteria, several smaller restaurant-like venues are on their campuses. Okay, so here are the examples for institutional food service facilities. So we have the hospital cafeteria and then the university canteen. So for the hospital cafeteria, so of course the main focus of the business here is uh, for the patients, no, for their medications, and of course need the need of having uh, serving food for their patients and other staff in the hospitals are also necessary. Okay. So here are the five M's of concept development okay, that you need to consider okay, when you will uh, when you will present no when you present your uh, feasibility study, uh, the creation of service facility or host, uh, hotel or uh, recreational facility, you need to have this five M's. Okay, the market, okay, the menu, the money, the management. And the mode of execution, of course, centering the success. Okay, you need to be uh, to, of course, the primary goal of your concept development is for this to become successful or for your uh, to materialize. Okay, and for the business plan to materialize, and of course, for your feasibility study to become feasible. Okay, so that's part of success. So again, the five M's of concept development includes the market, the menu, the money, the management, and the mode of execution. Okay. So the market, the basic marketing question that must be answered are, so to whom is the food operation being marketed? What method okay, will be used to communicate to this market and then is the market large enough to generate sales and produce a profit or will the potential customer want or need the food product will internal marketing successfully sell the customer additional services or products after he or she arrives at the food service facility or how will the market be identified and then will a quality assurance plan be developed that will encourage the customer to return because of their superior service and or product quality? Okay, so these are some of the questions that you need to consider uh, in two steps. Okay, market development is a three-step process. Okay, so you need to have your market research, okay, market segmentation, and the pricing penetration okay so for the market research also of course uh, when you are going to develop your uh, concept you need to consider or to have a market research first you know? who are those markets that will um uh, buy your products and services you know? and uh what are their demographics okay so that includes also the in the market segmentation and of course in the pricing penetration their buying power is it your con or, or is your concept or is the price of your the products and services that you offer can be bought or not okay if your uh the price or your pricing strategy is correct or not depending upon your uh, market. Okay. So you need to consider this three steps. Okay. So next is the menu. So the menu is the heart of the design. From a design and layout perspective, these are just some of the factors determined by the menu. Of course, the amount of space required, you know, the service area size and design, the dishwashing area size and dish machine capacity. As you all know the menu, as you know first what dish you want to include in your menu. So this all um, uh, considerations encompass that, okay? 
types of cooking equipment, equipment capacity, size of dry and refrigerated storage areas, as well as number of employees and amount of investment required. So there are lots of um, things that um, link with the menu. Okay? There are lots of considerations or details that importantly should match the menu. Okay? So meaning the menu is the heart of the design. So you cannot um, create or uh, with uh, the design or the concept without considering the menu. So of course, so you have these following factors to review. Are going to have your concept, of course, you need to have the menu first. Okay, so considerations for menu development additional culinary trends. So, hone in on which culinary trends are right for your menu with it and don't. So, don't fall or fad. A fad on your menu can come off as reactionary and won't have the longevity needed to support your business. So, it's because it's trendy, you will uh, also include that in your menu. Okay. So what if it's trendy but it's not viable? No? It's not uh, uh, your target market doesn't want that. Okay. Your customers doesn't want that, even if it's trendy or they are not capable of buying that. Okay. Don't extend beyond your brand. Diversifying your menu too much will dilute your brand. So as you um, as you are as you want your menu to become successful, no, you need for the do. Okay, so you need to align the menu to your brand. So it is a key touch point after all. So uh, on the first discussion, I told you that um, you need to know your core values. No? You need to present consideration brand is included there you need to know your brand no? and then uh, for the first one for this uh, 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 don't no for the do this one do focus on current and upcoming culinary trends do your research sure that there is used to back up anything being touted as a culinary trend before me okay so uh, in uh, addition to the explanation, you need to do research, more research, no? It's not just because it's trendy, you will include that in your menu immediately. So for this, no, again, you need to align the menu to your brand. Okay, so that is key touch point. So you need to match the menu into your brand. You don't try to menu everything to everyone. To create a menu that pleases the majority of your most sought after customers. So do focus on your menu size. Less can and should be more, especially when you are consider execution, consistency, and the impact on oversized menu as on food days. Now, if you are not capable, no, um, because all of uh, the factors, there are lots of factors included or that should be considered if to expand your menu. No? So before doing that, you need to consider the size. No? Uh, if if your staff are enough to upper for or, or to create that menu, no, it's it's just not like well, as you want to add something immediately on the menu. You need to consider lots of factors. Okay, don't use untested recipes. You have a chef to give the equipment for a reason you should use them. So do look for ways to enhance your menu. Describe preparation techniques relying on keywords and prices that play on people's senses. Okay? So you need to be sure on what menu are you going to, on what menu are you going to develop, no? Are you going to present to your customers, no? Uh, even you are doing trial and error, even you are um, creating a new menu, you need to test and do research no? before um, uh, putting those menu into your recipe, no? in uh, uh, your business itself. Okay? 
because if you uh, only consider or if you do not do research and you uh, not considering different uh, factors and such as uh, your uh, uh, capacity of the equipment, no, your people and others, no, uh, reflect into your course. Okay, it might add up to your course. That will, um, of course, make your business down. No? If you do not um, consider all of the factors no? before pushing those men the men. Okay, then this is fun. Examining these business drivers will uncover opportunities to differentiate your menu. For the current plans, look for void, the unique menu offering that will excite your current customers and attract new ones. Consider prime specialty items, novel preparation techniques, exclusive services, or remarkable prices. For the competitive environment, menus within your service type, for example, full service, limited service, or quick service. For the menu prices within your range, uh, it can be fine dining, it can be family dining, or casual dining. For the emerging competition in your market, so you can have groceries, no? or grocery stores with restaurant style offering, convenience stores, meal solutions, companies, and local food delivery services. Okay, so in pricing is a common misconception that you should automatically price your menu lower than your competition. Instead, you should price it based on your proposed value proposition. The so proposed value proposition reinforces the value of your brand and drives profitability. Allows you to charge higher than your competition for menu items that you do or intend to do better than them. And then warrants pricing staple dishes the same as your competition to maintain your market. So it's not just because you have a lower price than your competitor, it means that uh, your customers will buy will buy that repetitively. No? Uh, meaning you need to also uh consider the proposed value proposition so the quality you need to focus on the quality so uh, even your uh the menu price of your menu is higher than your competition but the value of your product you know, or the services that you will offer is the price so it means your customers will going to buy your products and services repetitively or you will have a um, return of customer no? or repeat business, okay? Customer feedback. This is very important. Look and listen for honest thoughts on what customers think of your menu. Consider making changes based on your current theme. So this can help, no? And comments, read reviews, and look at what people are saying about your menu. It can be seen in the following uh, different platforms, okay, social media, okay, third party resources, and even one on one conversation. So, for uh, our situation today, so limited uh, contact with the customers are uh, observed. So, some of the comments of these uh, customers or the customer feedback are posted here in different social media platforms. Okay. But you can do one on one, but you need to consider the safety health protocols. Okay, next is of course money. Okay. Successful capitalization of a food facility includes funds for planning, cost, building construction or renovation, equipment, china glassware, utensils, furniture and fixtures, decor, and operating costs. So you need to lower down it. Okay, so um in every business our aim is to become profitable okay. one of our aims is to become profitable this is to become successful so you need to lower down your cost in order to avoid the capital deficit allocate sufficient funds for building renovation or new construction professional interior design equipment and supplies to support production and then the purchase of furniture and fixtures so these are uh, the things that you need to allot budget to okay, or to have sufficient funds 
for this um, uh, thing no? that are very important in order to have your uh, business, no? developing your uh, concept for your business. Okay? okay, for the management, following are the typical questions to be addressed. Okay. Who will operate the food service facility? What kind of food experience and educational background must this person have? Who will assist this person in covering the long hours that are usually required to operate a food service facility? Then you need to consider also what level of pay will this person receive? And then if this person will be rewarded in some way for excellent sales and profit results, or how will the owner set operational policies and communicate this to the management? So there are lots of things to do you know, in terms of management. You need also to manage people, you need to manage the facility, the supply chain, the operations, the whole operations, you need to manage that well. You need in uh, developing your concept, you need to put uh, specific individuals for this um, task okay? on who are going to manage this, how are you going to, to do this, okay? So, uh, as I, I have uh, here in the slides, you know, these are the considerations. Okay? Management development is the overall concept that describes the many ways in which organization help employees uh, develop their personal and organizational skills, either as managers in a job or with an eventual management job in mind. It presents and reinforces needed skills and management techniques. So here are the leadership and management development framework. Of course, leading self. You, know, you need to have this personal mastery, projecting a professional image and strategic thinking. So you need to establish this first. And then it will follow leading of others. Fundamentals of leadership and, manage, leadership and management, high performance leadership, coaching and mentoring. Okay. And then managing the business, leading and managing change, project management, problem solving and decision making, and then management meeting. So there are lots of um, considerations now. We need for this management development framework in order for us to manage the business properly okay? and uh, thus uh, becoming the business successfully. Okay? Mode of execution. All the plans in the world are worth nothing until they are executed. And execution centers around control systems and personnel. Share the following questions. Are you using prepared food or cooking from scratch? How is the flow of trust controlled? How will sales be analyzed? What kind of forecasting will you implement? What controls are in place concerning receiving and purchasing? And then, of course, portion control. Okay. And then for the production methods, this will also determine the number of employees in the kitchen and the skill level of these employees. And then as well as the control system, food and beverage controls involve many different parts of the facility and control planning for these controls before the project is under construction is strongly recommended. The following areas to control are task control, sales analysis, guest check control, food production forecasting, storeroom and refrigeration control, backdoor security, labor control, purchasing and receiving control, quality control, and portion control. For the personnel, the employees, hours of operation, the staffing patterns, staff benefits, skill levels, Level of supervision, employees must all determine before serious development of the food facility begins. Uh, so this is very important. Uh, how are you going to uh, allot schedule for your personnel? Uh, what, how long will be your operation? The business hours, staffing patterns, the benefits, the skill levels, and as well as the level of supervision. As part of its concept development, the fast food industry based its low labor costs on the use of early and skilled labor scheduled to work short periods of time. Usually in fast food service, they have the 
minimum hours of work, which is four hours, or six and then eight hours. So the, the pay for this or the, the um, salary is based on hourly basis or uh, based on the R, their hourly or the uh, number of hours they rendered in the um, in their duty. No? So uh, that's how full service industry bases low uh, labor cost. No? So because uh, the, the food service industry is not like uh, restaurants and dining uh, restaurants, uh, fine dining restaurants and casual resto uh, restaurants. So these restaurants um, uh, may have a daily, daily uh, pay or a daily salary for their employees. So as compared to um, fast food chains, fast food chains which have um, hourly rate or hourly basis of salary okay so you can uh, refer to this uh, uh on how to develop a restaurant concept okay so let's try to open this link okay so you have here uh article about the or entitled how to develop a restaurant concept Sample plan. Okay, you can uh, refer to this article. No? Uh, it says here you need to choose a team first, the research the market, consider the equipment location and design, and to write a complete business plan. Okay, so okay, so I hope you will uh, read this. No? Additional uh, knowledge in connection to our topic. Okay. I'm gonna read this article. Okay. And then uh, here is a YouTube video about on how to develop this business concept. Okay. I will uh, share the link on our Google Classroom later. Kindly watch this as well. And then um, here it is, no, the link for the restaurant concept sample plan. Okay, for my references, here are my references. And then for the YouTube video, can you watch this? Okay, thank you very much. I hope you learned something. So for this um, topic, no, for the of concept development, you need to uh, answer all of that in your feasibility study presentation. And then you need to study um, uh, all of those M's and other considerations in making a concept no? or doing a concept development. So uh, kindly submit to me by group uh, the concept development that you are going to have no, or the concept that you are going to have in your feasibility study. And then um, you will present that on class. And, and then I will make comments for that. Okay? So if that's approved, it will be used in feasibility study. Okay? So again, thank you very much. I hope you learned something. No, we have lots of topics discussed today. And I hope you are all and uh, healthy. So follow safety health protocols. Okay. Again, thank you very much and stay safe everyone.